Welcome to the No Budget Indie Film Cast, where we dip into the independent film universe to highlight those films that you might not have heard about elsewhere. Will you agree with our panel, or will our panel agree with each other? Tune in to find out. I am Milo Dennison, and with me, as always, is Claire Milan. Hello. And Colin Feeney. Hello. All right, Claire, what's on the agenda this week? So this week, we sat down to watch a film called Fred. It's directed by Bjorn Franklin and Johnny Mar- Marchetta. Um, it's a dramatic short. Um, it's about it's set actually in the late 1960s. Fred was a um, solemn man in his late 70s with no friends and family left, living in his brother-in-law's house until forced to leave. All he has are his memories and emotions. Unfortunately, many of these are sad and harrowing because Fred was a lookout on board the RMS Titanic and was the one who spotted the iceberg that fatally sunk the ship in 1912. Um, his mind takes him back to that time, to both the trauma of the disaster itself and the coldness and blame he faced as one of the few survivors on the crew. As time goes on, these memories grow more vivid, forcing Fred to, to a breaking point and leaving him to make a devastating decision. Um, yeah, it's, it's I just came across it online and it's a beautiful short film. And it's a true story, actually. This guy uh, was is, is was real. And he, uh, yeah, he was aboard the Titanic and one of the guys to spot the the iceberg and, and he survived. And he has this, he, he's questioned afterwards and he has this extreme survivor's guilt and PTSD. Um, but what is stunning about this film is the cinematography. So it, it opens and you see, it looks like an iceberg in water and it's, it's Fred as an older man shaving his face. And then you also see a glass and it begins to overflow. And I was listening to it um, w- with my headphones and, and the whole sound design was absolutely stunning. It's well worth listening to this film, You're even just listening to it with headphones on, because um, it, it brings you back to the sounds of, of the, the, the Titanic and the sounds of being a ship. Um, and even the, 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 the kind of silhouette they use and, and the shadow and the lighting there's one bit where he's he's in his room as an older man and it's kind of slightly tilted. And he looks like he's on a ship. Um, it's very, very harrowing and emotional. And it does show the re- a real the real man at the end, a picture of it. Um, I won't spoil it, but it is very harrowing. It leaves a certain impression with you. And you kind of don't think... It makes you think about people who survive these disasters and the guilt... Um, the guilt that, that they're left with, the PTSD. And the Titanic was in 1912. So that would have been probably one of the biggest disasters since World War One at that time. So World War II hadn't happened. So it would have been one of the biggest worldwide disasters that left the impression um, on the world. But what did you think of it? Yeah, it was really well done. And you're right on the sound design mm-hmm. uh, because that really... Brings it in. It's one of the things I keyed into as well because there's not really any action, right? There's this the scene with the guy talking and asking, answering questions. There's the older guy doing the shaving and stuff like that. So not a lot is going on, but the sound design and how in, uh, good the performances are and bringing you into the character, like in general, a lot extreme close ups drive me nuts. Sorry, I got to blow my nose. <laughs> I think I picked up a sinus infection no. uh, on my little trip there. So anyway, so the, um, what was I, uh, you know, the close up. So I tend to find those really annoying. And with, with this film though, is it shows if you do them correctly, why they work and how, and, and how they work, because you really are drawn into this life of this person by those close-ups and even with uh kind of how the camera movement done and and again like you you said the shot of him in the room and as it kind of slowly turns you get that the the feeling of the 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 ship sinking and stuff um so yeah it, it is really well done and it's very short what is it like three or four it's minutes six, three it's minutes? actually six minutes it's funny because this one feels shorter than it actually is for it some feels reason very short yeah yeah and it just yeah, it feels minutes. a lot shorter yeah, mm-hmm. and I think it's such a great example of a no, well, probably loads of money put into this, but it looks like a no budget way of doing things. Like that's so clever with the shaving foam. And you think, oh, that's mm-hmm. an iceberg. 
dust in the water. I just thought that was such a clever device. And it's a great example of using uh, something that probably didn't cost as much money than using a real iceberg or, you know, a real ship or it just it's just worked so well, didn't it? Yeah, that's the thing. Like it would have if they tried doing something like that, I think it would have had less impact because you would have been paying attention probably to the fake looking iceberg or the, you know, that kind of stuff. But this you're just focused on the character and his reaction to what's going on mm. and and the sound design really brings you into it uh so yeah it was really quite impressively done yeah you, yeah you're about right like it was it was very evocative the use of sound and imagery and it sort of it brought you right back even though it was very very simple uh it was very just a very simple story it was just him being interviewed and then the old man later on in life so yeah um from that point of view it was brilliantly done uh i i, I kind of looked them up afterwards and I, I think it's sort of unfair to to imply that he was at fault and so on and I, I think that the film does uh because uh coincidentally i i just happened recently to listen to a podcast all about the, the titanic and uh like most of these things, I've already forgotten about ninety five percent of it. But um, like yeah, one thing they did say was that there had been more iceberg warnings, and they'd been getting telegrams. They're like icebergs, ice, so, you know. So they knew they were. They knew it was a likelihood, and that they they, uh, they didn't really take any sort of take it into consideration um, in terms of the direction or speed or anything like that. They just they just carried on. So. Um, the implication that it that that he that he was to blame was wrong, and also, uh, I don't think it's necessarily clear that he that he was he killed himself because he was so racked with guilt. There was other things went on in his life later on, um, that that sort of led him down to like killing himself, which was a long time later. So, um, I I I think they took a certain dramatic license with his character, but I mean, other than that, it was it was you know it was. It was, I suppose, it was using him, uh, you know, as a character to to convey this kind of idea that that he was, you know, like he was racked with guilt, and that 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 the the whole the whole setup of the film, you know, bringing him back, the 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 idea that that you know he he could hear the people, he could hear the sounds, you know, like when they when they showed him as a young person been interviewed he looked guilty he sounded guilty and that was all very that was all very well done but uh i i yeah i don't think it's fair to him yeah i i, I see your point i i don't i didn't get the vibe that they were trying to make him necessarily look guilty i think they were i got the vibe that they were tr like the person doing the interviewing was trying to make him look guilty yes. to where he's just like you know traumatized by the event and he doesn't want to talk about it and that kind of stuff and they were which is probably true i'm sure in real life they were trying to pass blame onto people and they're like well let's try to blame the guy that was on lookout right and like you said i did the same thing call i looked i looked him up and it was interesting because afterwards he would continue to say like i probably would have seen it if they had given me binoculars but they didn't give me binoculars right and that that kind of stuff and the captain uh making the decision to keep going at the speed they were going versus slowing down at night and 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 the the communications and stuff so so it is interesting how mm -hmm. yeah uh, they right. tried to kind of pass blame on him um but i didn't i didn't quite get that vibe from the film that that the filmmaker was trying to say it was his fault i wonder did he jump in the boat do you know what I mean? There's a kind of implication, like, do you know the way when you know. watch the film Titanic, some of them weren't meant to be in the boat and he jumped in. No, he, 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 would, have been a member, he would have been a member of the crew. So he would have been supposed to have been, you know, yeah. manning one of the boats. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, they would have had crew members in okay. the lifeboats to man the lifeboats. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he would have been doing that. Yeah, God. And even at the end, there, there's a scene of, like, kind of a person drowning. And it's like it's kind of like a metaphor for his life, like he's been drowning, you know, in this guilt. Yeah. I just thought that was very well done, you know, and 
yeah, it leaves a massive impression with you. Um, and yeah, there's definitely a longer film in this. Maybe this man, like Titanic. What? Actually, no, not Titanic. Yeah. This man's life. Like it's obviously, the Titanic. Well, he lived famous. an interesting life. So after this, uh, so World War One happened after this. Uh, quick correction there, but um, so he actually served, I think, on the Olympia. Yeah. After this, uh, he served on a ship in World War One and World War Two. Okay. And then I think he became a salesman or something like that. So he did get married. And like Kahl was saying, like before he, you know, spoiler, he killed himself, but at the age of 77. So he lived a long life, but his wife had just died and he kind of got kicked out of his house. Mm -hmm. And so he had a lot of stuff going on in his life at the time. So I, I, I do agree with your point, Kahl, where they were trying to imply with the film that it was because of the Titanic that he killed himself and and i agree i think if he had lived that long you know he probably you know killed himself because he was just generally depressed mm -hmm. and had all these things happen to him and apparently most of the people that died they didn't actually drown they they froze to death okay. because now everybody had life jackets so they were in the water and the water was freezing and and uh that ultimately led to their that's and I think even the, like there were there were lifeboats there, and they could have taken on more people, but yeah. um they were afraid that they'd be like, putting themselves at risk if they kind of went in to rescue people that they'd be mm -hmm. overwhelmed by people trying to get in the boats, mm -hmm. but it was uh pretty tragic. Like there was one, there was one story. There was a few interesting stories, uh, and there was one uh, that was that kind of resonated. There was there was this boy, and. He he was fifteen when he went when he boarded the Titanic, and his birthday took place uh, on the day the boat sank. So I think it was the fifteenth of April, and as part of as part of the ritual uh, of turn, turning sixteen, he went from short trousers to long trousers. So he was given these long trousers, which signified you know he was now a man at sixteen. And so then when it came to getting on the lifeboats, women and children first, he was no longer a child. Oh, no. So he couldn't get on the lifeboat. Now, seemingly, he didn't want to. That's what they were saying. I oh, know, I want them. I'm, I'm staying with the men. But, yeah. He just, died. Just, he died, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. But to the film, I think the fact that we're having this discussion about like other people in the ship and stuff like that, that's a testament to the filmmaker mm -hmm. that he actually motivated us to go look up the history yeah. of this particular person and kind of delve into a bit more detail about it. So, mm -hmm. so prop, props to the filmmaker. Oh, absolutely. That, I and I love that. I, that's what I love about films that do this, well, especially when they're based on real people, that your curiosity and then makes you appreciate things and like it's it's and it makes you realize how harrowing these things are and these tragedies um yeah that's why yeah so as you said props to the filmmaker i love, I love the effect as well you, you mentioned it earlier with the, the water overflowing the glass brilliant um uh, i'm not sure they did that but yeah it was, it was, really yeah, it was a neat effect i was thinking the same thing <laughs> yeah. such yeah. a great effect and such a simple device rather than having a massive ocean of whatever but it's just yeah. and even the sound it was with the sound effect and overflowing glass, you did you didn't need anything else, you know. Mm. It's it's such a brilliant brilliant device for for especially for no budget filmmaking. Uh, I mean, I got the impression that that it wasn't a cheap film to make. No, it wasn't at all. No, yeah. no, there's definitely a lot of money put into it. But it was just a really good device, yeah. But it could have been made for a pretty low budget though, because yeah. yeah. other things with the way it was shot and stuff. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. Well, anything else before we rate it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, well, I'll just say uh, that, uh, well, I'm not really, I'm not basing the film, but the one, one of the, one of the, the jokes from the, from the podcast was uh, the, I think, no, I think it was from The Onion, that's right, you know, The Onion, satirical magazine, and it was a uh, world's, world's greatest metaphor hits iceberg. <laughs> so... All right. And on that, <laughs> to our radio joke. Portion of the joke. Show. Right. Another college joke. Here we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm here all the year, folks. <laughs> uh, all right, Carl. Uh, why don't you go first? Okay, I'll go first. Um, 
so it 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 was a very very well made very very evocative film um there's there's nothing you could you could look at and say they could have done this better um yeah, like I mean, there's no reason not to give it full marks. Uh, and I tell you what, I'm not going to give it full marks because I I think they were slightly unfair, even though they have your right to be, you know, take dramatic license and so on. But just because I think I think the way they 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 made the central character uh, seem to be a lot more to blame than he was, I'll give it four and a half. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I'm with you. I, I can't fault it in any way. I think it's really well made. Uh, and certainly we could debate the dramatic license, but that's any filmmaking. Uh, but it did have a strong emotional impact. It motivated me to go search their search this guy, which is interest which is always good in a film. So I'm gonna go a full five stars on it. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it was stunning cinematography, beautiful acting and left a deep impression with me. Uh, and again, made me look up who the real guy was. Uh, so I'm going to have full marks, five stars for me as well. All right. Well, there you have it. No budget film cast audience. We really enjoyed this film. Uh, what's it called again? Fred. Fred. Is that right? Yeah, Fred. Fred. It's called Fred. Check it out. Let us know what you think. You can leave a comment or you can reach us on social media at No Budget Show on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. And with that, we'll say see you next time and goodbye. Goodbye.